Uh, hello everybody and welcome back to our another video Roblox Studio the basics in our last video we made a tow truck with this truck here which we in a previous previous video uh, converted so that way it uses uh, these right we took this truck out of the toolbox we gave it some tablet buttons so in this uh, next video series, we're going to go over this in a little bit more detail. These buttons, we're going to add some more buttons to it. And I think we're going to build a complete uh, tow truck, all right, from start to finish. It's going to be several, several videos, um, but I know you guys enjoy it. And uh, like I say, there needs to be more fun vehicle games, I think, anyways. in the wrong gear it just says gear drive so we'll have to fix that i realize i'm shifting gear i'm in standard transmission mode shifting gear but it's not actually showing which gear i'm in all right well we'll have to change that for sure so, all right i got this crane i don't want to speak too much about it because depending on how much pain we have in this video so there's a few basic principles with Roblox. We can go over that here while I'm playing around with this with this crane here. So a few of the basic principles are whenever you have things that are moving around, you want the vehicle to be anchored. You want the vehicle to be anchored. Uh, otherwise, uh, funny things will happen. Or you'll fly off the map. Right, lots of things. Let's see. Pad on, pad on. You know, this is what I like about uh, these UIs. Look at that. And we can go up. Let's see here. Where are we? Oh, you see how it's moving a little bit? You see how it's it's twitching, right? So what I've done is I've got the the uh, base of the vehicle is anchored. Oh, it's gone. The base of the vehicle is anchored. And that allows us to move the vehicle, pick things up, uh, throw weight around. You see I'm sliding sideways there. These are all, these are all just uh, basic Roblox issues that I've had to deal with. Um, yeah. So then we've got this arm here. Oh, whoa. Did you see that? See how I'm moving? The whole crane, it's not supposed to be moving. Um, now sometimes that's lag. There can be latency between you and the server. I've had it happen where I've logged out. I thought it was me and I went and I checked the code and no, it was just, it just happens to be Roblox just doing its thing. So, you know, you're, you make a game and sometimes the game doesn't perform the way you want it to. And that's fine, you know. What's important is that you learn and you have fun and you build a experience that other players can join and the other players are gonna have fun at the same time and that's kind of what we're trying to do here all right so let's get started first thing we're going to do insert a part and this is going to be the hinge so let's go to model create we're going to create a weld and we're going to weld this part to the body all right this part here and then what we're going to do is we are going to um, I want to scale it? Yeah, probably not for the purpose of this demonstration. Okay, so now we want to make sure that can collide is off and that the object is not anchored. And we're going to do the same thing for this. We'll change those properties when we write our code. Uh, but right now, that's just it. Just while we're building and playing and discovering, the best thing that we can do is make all these objects so they can't collide with each other so we can discover what we're going to do. Okay, <clears throat> so here we have the tow truck bed. And this is what the vehicle, in theory, is gonna be welded to. It's just 
really basic. We're going to go through, we're going to put lights on this truck and we're going to complete this tow truck. I know we didn't complete the last tow truck, we kind of mashed it all together, uh, but that was just kind of, it's been a while since I've gone through the code and I just, it was a real refresher for me. Um, but now that we've got the code and I know what I need to do, hopefully when it comes to programming this, uh, we shouldn't have we shouldn't have too many issues. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run all of uh, this through our trailer our trailer UI. Um, I have a previous video where we took this truck from the toolbox, we edited it, and we added a uh, user interface. I'll just press play just so you guys can see that. We added a user interface to it. Oh, frame is not a valid, uh, where's the user interface is probably here. Uh, yeah. uh, let's see here. <gasps> All right, so it doesn't want to. make it visible. Uh oh, uh oh, here we go. Let's see. Already, already running into issues. <laughs> Haven't done anything. It should just open the frame, right? Ah. Oh, you know what I did? No, I know what I did. The frame's not visible. Hey, there we go. All right. So we made this here. Okay. And I put a text uh, label in there called the tow bed. And we're going to add the buttons in here, which are going to allow this tow bed uh, to function just like we did in the last tow truck except this time we're gonna have it's gonna be a little fancier all right so the first thing we want to do is let's get rid of that well all right we're gonna take this part and we're gonna take this part and we're gonna go control G which will group them together as a model and we can rename this as bed easy peasy and we're gonna put that model in the miscellaneous folder on the truck all right and then if we press play hopefully nothing happens to the truck right we're missing the bed and that's because I took away the weld and I made it can't glide false so it fell off it fell off the world but that's fine okay <clears throat> so now what we're gonna do is we need to create a hinge all right between this plate and this plate. So we can just click on hinge, just like that. And then you can just click on the one object and the second object. There we go, we have a hinge. Now what we want to do, doesn't matter where the hinge is on the body, it really, it really doesn't, it'll still function. But we wanna make sure that the Hinge is in alignment. Now in the last videos where I made the tow truck, I had some alignment issues with some of the constraints. I did figure those out. So in this video, we're gonna go over it. Hopefully we don't have any issues uh, with any of our constraints. So the first thing we wanna do is, we wanna copy that position and we want to paste it into here. And that way, all right. Then what we need to do is we need to say, okay, which way do we want this thing to turn? I don't know if we'll have to change that. So then what we do is we'll click on the hinge constraint. And down here at the bottom where it says hinge actuator type, we have two options. We can turn it into a motor or we can turn it into a servo. All right, a servo will go up and down. Uh, the motor, it's all about angular velocity. So angular velocity one should make it go up. Angular velocity minus one should make it come down. We'll figure that out though. That that I am not going to figure that out right now, actually. Okay, we can say angular velocity one. And then what we'll do is we'll say limits enabled. And then you have this green, this little green thing come up. And what is that? Well, what that, now we can determine where we want it to move. And as you can see here, the blue is our movement 
shows you the way it's going to rotate. So right now the arrow is facing left, so it's going to rotate this way, which is what we don't want. But I'll show you what's going to happen. Let's see. If we hit play, it should just start spinning. Oh, oh, wait, what happened there? It's not quite what. Oh no, we said upper angle 45. Okay, so I went to upper angle 45. And instead of moving that way, it actually moved that way. All right, so let's see if we turn the angular velocity to minus one. Now, there's many different ways to do it. Ah, yes, you see how it's trying to go down? That's what we want, okay? So when we're writing our code, we don't have to do anything to the hinge constraint, except for change the angular velocity. It makes it real easy. I'm not too sure what's happening outside. It makes it real easy to, uh, that's it. We're done basically with this, with this constraint. It's perfect. So now what we want to do is in our controller uh, script, where are we here? Trailer functions. Okay, so this local script here is our buttons, and then this is the functions. Okay. <clears throat> so next, we are going to modify the frame. So under starter, GUI, we're going to right click, insert object, insert a screen, GUI. Then we're going to drag the frame into the screen, GUI, and it's going to appear here. Now we can edit it, we can add things to it, and we don't have to keep clicking and clicking and clicking and trying to find out where it is. The other thing you'll notice is that I, I move up towards the sky, and that's because if I click off of this window, see, it's almost impossible for me to click to select it again, even if I'm here. So this way, if I highlight the frame, it's a lot easier for me to work with the frame, resize it and change it without accidentally clicking any other objects. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna insert an object uh, and it's just gonna be a text button for now. Okay, and we're gonna drag that button in here and we are going to rename this button um, bed up. Okay, and then we're gonna duplicate that and we're gonna have another button and we're gonna rename that and that's gonna say uh, bed down, okay? And now we're gonna change the color of it. So here under data, background color three, let's change bed up to green and let's change bed down to red just for the purpose of this uh, tutorial. Now you'll notice that the frame has round corners and the buttons have square corners. If you want to make the buttons with the round corners, we'll go right click, insert object, uh, and then just UI. And what it is, it's a UI corner. See, there's gradients. This is everything that you can add. Text size constraints. There's so many things that you can do uh, to make these so much better um, than what you know than what I'm what I'm doing. And that is up to you. Uh, while you're designing your game and you're figuring out your color schemes and all that sort of stuff, that's sort of uh, your thing, right? And then we can take the frame. We can say background transparency. Right now it's set to zero. We can kind of do that. See how it's sort of got this fade, right? And then our text label, we can kind of give that a, a bit of a fade too. And then that way, it, see, you can see the, kind of see through it. it. Just makes it a little easier. Maybe you wanted a big window, you know, and you're here and you're working on, on the car doing that. and it, just helps, right? It doesn't block off your vision. Okay, so now that we have those two uh, buttons, we're going to drag the frame back into our truck. Okay, then we're going to double click on the local script, and here is where we are going to write our functions for the buttons. So, trailer refers to this object value. And GUI refers to the frame. So we just go GUI uh, dot uh, bed. See, and then when you press B, there's our two buttons, bed up, and then we'll say dot. Uh, now I want to say mouse button one down. We're going to add two 
Yeah, one mouse button down, right connect, function. Um, okay, and then what do we want it to do? Well, let's rename this plate and let's rename this bed. Okay, so the bed is going to be, whoops, rename, all right, <laughs> rename that plate. All right, now you notice the hinge constraint is in the bed, so we need to, we need to find that, okay? So let's get rid of this right now, let's get rid of that also. And we will say a script dot parent which brings us to trailer connect okay dot parent and we should just be able to say no, do I have to go to dot bed so it's gonna take us three one two all right anyways it's all good yeah dot bed dot uh, bed <laughs> dot hinge constraint all right, and now what do we want to do? We just want to change the angular velocity, right? Dot hinge constraint, and we can say uh, dot, no. Dot angular uh, velocity equals, and we could even say 0.5. Let's say that was too fast, okay? The other thing um, we're going to need to do is we're gonna to need to weld these parts together. So when you have three or four objects, like we have with the crane, and they extend out, these constraints tend to move. They shouldn't, right? Like I should be able to say, um, for example, all right, let's duplicate this, copy and paste it. And we're gonna say uh, mouse button one up, and what that will do is that will change the velocity to zero. Um, no, sorry, that's not the way we're gonna do this. This is gonna have to change. This part here, <laughs> this goes in here in the controller. All right, so we can get rid of all this. Right, we'll just do that for now. And then we'll put a point 0.1. I always put a weight in there, and that way it gives the script a chance to load. If you lag, it gives it a chance to load. So now in this script, uh, what we're going to do is... Um, Oh, I'm just having a, it's kind of late, and I'm just kind of having a, a, a moment here. Okay, before we get into this, I'm just going to pause the, uh, I'm going to pause this here, and uh, what is it, 18 minutes in? Okay, that's pretty good. i got a coffee going, so I'm just going to go check on my coffee, and then I'll come back. But just, you can look at this code here, and this is mouse button one down, so when we press the button down, it's going to do something, and then when you release the mouse button, it's going to do something else. I'll be right back. So what I need to do is, I've forgotten, I 
forgotten. <laughs> oh, let's see. Miscellaneous. Where are we at? This is everything that's in the crane. Look at all this, uh, all this neat stuff. I have to. Uh, what do we got here? Let's see. Uh, we're looking for one. Oh, that was good. Thank you. See, bed event, witch event, trailer, right? All that. That's that. Um, which we're gonna have to add these these ones in here. Okay. Uh, what do we have here? Trailer, fire server, winch off. That's what I was looking for. So we have these functions, then we need to go trailer, right? And then we need to say fire. Oops, this would be a capital F. We say fire server, and then we put in the variable. We can say uh, I'll have to change that, these keyboards. It needs to be in quotation marks, and we can say up. Okay, so that's our variable for up. And I'm pretty sure, yeah, that's all we gotta do. All right, same here, trailer, fire, server, and this will be up stop. Easy peasy, okay? Um, and now, I'm gonna close this here. Like I said, this is gonna be a long one because we're gonna be making a, a tow truck with a welder and everything on here as well. And then we're gonna do the lights and do all kinds of fancy. This is gonna be a pretty good build, this one. A whole, oh, it's gonna be a long build. Um, okay, okay, so we've got that. So now we need to go into the UI controller script. And now we need to add in the variables. So we say if variable, is equal to up then oops, up. And remember last time it was the else if else if so it turns out that all these all these bit weld commands are they're like in their own they have to all relate <laughs> to themselves all right so a variable up then and then this is where we say script right uh dot parent where are we here uh should be dot bed dot bed okay dot angular Nope, uh, we say dot hinge constraint, dot angular velocity, right, equals 0.5. And we'll say else if, okay, variable is equal to up, up stop, then what do we want to do? We want to say script dot parent dot bed, dot bed, dot hinge constraint, dot angular velocity equals zero. So when we let go of the mouse, when we let go of the button, it should stop. Let's see if that works. Sometimes it takes a minute. You write the code, you think it works, and until you test it, maybe it doesn't fully. All right, let's try it out. There. Now that's a bit fast, but as you can see, when I let go of the button, it stopped moving, okay? So we can go back in here and we can say that was too fast. Let's make it 0.1. This is what I didn't do last time when I was saying you can connect that through. So this is what we're doing. There, see how slow it is? And you let go. As soon as you let go, I mean, there's a bit of a delay. That's all right. Neato, huh? <clears throat> and then we just reverse it. So we can come back in here, okay? And we can do the same thing. We can say GUI uh, dot, uh, let's see, dot bed down. Yeah, uh, dot mouse button one down, right? Connect function. And we say trailer which is our object value, right? Fire, server, and then in there, is, this is where we put, we put the variable. Oops, fire server, uh, bed down, and then we're just gonna copy this. I know I say, it, if you aren't that good at scripting, write, write every line out, and that was it. Bed down, stop, 
write every line down and then you'll just commit it to your memory and you'll know every time, okay, this is how I do this, this is how I do that. So now this actually has to be one, mouse button one up, all right? Then we go into our controller and we say, okay, let's try this. If variable is equal to uh, bed down, is that what we said it was? Bed down and bed town stop, right? We say then, we can say script dot parent dot bed dot bed dot hinge constraint dot angular velocity equals negative 0.1. So now it should go uh, down, all right? Uh, else if variable is equal to bed down stop then script dot parent dot bed dot bed dot hinge constraint dot angular velocity equals zero same thing as we did up above all right let's test it out and we click our button brings up our window toe bed goes up okay Toe bed goes down. Hey, that's pretty cool, huh? So now we've got a couple of options at this point. The bed is going to come up, and now we want the bed to slide down. We want the bed to slide down. So that way you can attach the car. Slide the car onto here, weld it, and then have that come back up onto. So here's here's where things kind of get a little tricky, okay? Because essentially you're going to have this, these two moving parts um, attached to another moving part, and that's where we need to add welds and a few more lines of code, enabling and disabling the welds, slowing things down a little bit, but it's going to allow everything to operate smoothly. So as you can see, we don't need to anchor the truck when we make the box go up and down. Like let's say this was a dump truck, right? When we dump, we don't need to anchor the truck. But when we start moving this way and this way, we are gonna need to anchor the vehicle, okay? Or else the truck is gonna wanna flip over, it's gonna wanna do all kinds of crazy things. So first thing we should do is try and I'm just thinking here, we've got two options, right? We can make another one of these, another plate, and have it on top of this plate, and have that plate move. That might be, that might be cool, actually. Let's try that, let's try that. Okay, let's see if we can scale this down. Now see if I, if I change the size of it, it's moving the constraint, all right? So always be aware of that. Whenever, whenever you set the constraint to a position, if you move the parts, it's going to move the constraint. If you resize the parts, it's going to resize uh, the constraint. Okay. So let's see. Let's see. Let's let's get another part here. Okay. And we're going to say can't collide false um, because we're still right. We're still working with all that. Let's see. Eh, let's make it about that wide. We're imitating a tow truck bed right now. Okay. So I'm just, I'm just moving it out of the way. Eventually, we're going to make it collidable. Uh, I just want to make sure it's, it's tall enough. All right. So we can name this, rename this to, we have plate, we have bed, and we can call this the tow bed going to take this, we're going to put it into the same folder, the rest of our, our, our guys here. <clears throat> okay, and then what we're going to do is, yeah, you know what, we're going to move this up here, not that one, hopefully. Okay, now we need what's called a prismatic constraint. So we've got a model, click on this little arrow underneath create. And we're going to create a prismatic constraint. That's basically an elevator. That's pretty much what we're going to do.
and we'll go between here and here. Like I say, it doesn't matter. Take this constraint, copy it. That is where we're going to align it. There, see? Now we're in alignment. Problem. It's facing uh, up. Okay. So we're going to click on the prismatic constraint. And down here where it says slider and actuator type, we are going to do, we're going to turn it to motor, just like we did with the hinge. We want to make sure the force is set to infinite. That helps when you have objects that have mass. Let's say you were making a game, uh, an RPG game, and the NP, you know, you get into a dungeon and you have to battle an NPC, and you want the NPC to do things, spin around, jump, maybe an object on them spins. You know, this is how you would do that, right? You have the constraints and you kind of just turn them into motors. And again, it's just it's just about the velocity. So we say limits enabled. Um, now, before we test where it's going to go, we need to rotate the attachments because we actually want it to go that way. All right, perfect. So now, if we see the blue arrow, the blue arrow is telling you the direction of movement in theory. <laughs> what, one of those ways, one of those ways. So if we say velocity of, of one, Let's just say, and then the upper limit is five. Let's just test it out, and let's see what's going to happen to this. Uh, it, it should move around. And okay, it's actually going the right way. I like that. But you notice this? You see the hinge there? You see how it's kind of it's kind of popping up a little bit? All right, we'll resolve that here in just a moment. Okay, so let's change this to I don't know. Let's change this to ten. Let's try ten. See how far back that goes. Is that enough? Good. The speed's good. I like that. Ten might, ten might be enough. Look at that. Ah, this worked out really well. Actually, I thought I was going to have to do a lot more. Fantastic. So when I was doing this earlier, I took the base. And I had it attached to the truck instead of having a block and a block like this. And it was doing all kinds of crazy things and I had to do a whole bunch of other stuff. But that's, that's sometimes the way it goes. You, you think you got it, but you really don't. Okay, so now this object here, we can say can collide. And we are gonna move this down to here. And then we need Copy that position, take this constraint, make sure it's in the same uh, position, all right? So now we've modeled the truck. Uh, we've modeled the what we want it to do. And now what we need to do is we need to add the code, which is going to allow us to make this part move just like the other parts, right? We need to add the code that's going to make the uh, angular velocity be 1 and the upper limit. So we can leave the upper limit at 10, and we can leave, we can pretty much leave everything the way it is. I just want to check to see if the velocity is at negative one. Yeah, see, it's perfect. Because we set the limit, it sets how far this thing's going to move. All right, now, it's, now we can go back to Rinse, rinse and repeat. We take our UI, all right? Now we need to edit our UI, which is what the player is going to use. Uh, we'll duplicate that. All right, we're gonna rename this. Let's say toe out, out. And this, this could be anything um, if you've, let's, see, let's duplicate that. If you've played any of the other, uh, let's rename this, uh, toe in. Um, you know, if we can go in the toolbox here, home, let's see, in the, in the, oh, we'll do that in a minute, but there's other type, types of, uh, of trucks, right? This one has a bed on it. Some of them have the, the arm that comes out on the bottom, and that's going to be the same, essentially the same thing that we're doing here, just a different way of modeling uh, and, and bringing it all together. Okay, so these have the UI corners. This one here is also going to be red, okay? 
And now this one, let's change the text on these so we know what they do. Instead of saying button, right? Out. Uh, this is down. N, and this one is up. If you want to change the text on the button, select the button. And over here in the properties tab, if you scroll down to where it says text, this gives you all the properties of the text. If you're scripting, this is what you want to be changing, right? Text color three, is text color, right? Text stroke color three. Let's say you're, you want um, a bunch of words to be written in a UI, you know, a player walks into it, somebody walks into a room and it pops up and it gives them some text. This is how you would do it. And this is how you control the color, the size, the font, right? All that's right here. Well, I'll put out a video in the future um, which describes in more detail this, how all this is going to work, okay? So now that we've added our two buttons, we can drag the frame back into the truck. And now we need to add the code. Essentially, it is, it is the same thing as this. GUI. Uh, dot um, what is this Tobed? Oh, these are the buttons. What are the names of the buttons here? Toe in and toe out. So GUI dot uh, toe in, right? Dot mouse button one down. Connect function. All right. Then we want to say trailer, which is our object value. And then we say fire server. And then we add in our variable that we want to fire. All right. And we'll say toe in. So what does that do? So our remote event here essentially listens to the object value. So whenever the object value value changes to one of these functions, it causes the, the remote event to trigger and when it triggers what we've done is we've referenced it here we say when it triggers these variables this is what we want it to do you know not overly it is complicated but it isn't overly complicated all right so we're going to copy this function and this is going to be mouse button one up all right uh, same thing and we can call this a toe in stop. All right. Now we can let's copy both of those. And that way we just have to change the uh, name to what? Toe out. I wonder if I have those backwards. Toe out. Toe out. Stop. Let's see if I have those backwards. Don't worry, I'll do. I was green. No, okay, all right, that'll work. That'll work the way you got it set up. Sometimes I do things backwards. Okay. Back to here. Enter, enter. We say if variable is equal to, and we have our variables. We'll say toe in. Then, right, script dot parent dot bed uh, dot bed because that's where the it is. Uh, we go the prismatic constraint, okay. And then what did we say? We were just going to change one value, and that is the velocity. All right, dot velocity dot visible v e l dot velocity equals. And now one was pretty slow. We'll just keep it at that. We'll say 0.5. If we need to speed it up, we can speed it up, and that's fine, right? And then we'll say uh, else if uh, variable is equal to uh, what I say toe in stop. All right, then uh, script dot parent dot bed dot bed dot prismatic constraint dot velocity equals zero. All right, so then we'll just hit play. 
display. We'll test it. We don't want to go any further than that just in case we have any issues that we need to fix. You, you know, you write a whole bunch of code and then all of a sudden, yeah, see it's lifting up just a little bit. So I'll probably add, I'll probably add, let's see, out, funnel in. Okay, yeah, see I got those backwards. In is out and out is in. All right, it seems a bit slow, but it works. So this, we'll have to change this to, uh, should be toe out and out stop. <coughs> toe out and toe out stop. Yeah, we'll change that to one on this case. So the other thing I want to do is I want to show you, see how that's flat? Or whatever, at zero. And then you load it. Notice how it's on a bit of an angle. That's what I was talking about with uh, these constraints. Once they start moving around, they can really, if we start driving around, this will bounce. So what we're going to need to do is uh, add a weld here. Just wondering where we want the weld. The weld is going to be in here, in the bed, with everything else. And we're going to go through model, create a weld just like that. And then we create a weld constraint, and then we're going to rename that. Um, let's rename that to uh, lock, let's just say. Uh, and that's just an easy way to uh, reference that. And now what we want to do is any time this thing moves up and down, we want to say script dot parent dot bed dot bed dot lock dot enabled equals false. All right, so what we've done is we've, and then every time it stops, it re-enables that weld every time. And now we need to do the same thing, uh, pull the bed down, so right away, uh, and then after it stops, you want to do that. We don't need to do it for the toe in and out because it's actually the bed. Now if we hit play, you'll see. Ah, you see it stayed straight. And also, if we go up and stop. All right, you see the truck moved a little bit? I don't know if we'll have to, uh, but now this is also welded in this position. So if a heavy object were to fall on it, it's not gonna move. It's secure, it's where we want it to be. And that's basically what I had to do with the crane. All these parts are welded, and every time the parts move, the welds are disabled, it allows the parts to move, and then the welds are enabled again, and that holds everything into place. That's really what you need to do with Roblox when you start getting all these moving parts. Otherwise, the object will just spin off. It'll fly forever. Yeah, it took me a long time to, uh, <laughs> long time to understand. The other way to do it is, um, you can say instance.new motor in here. You can make a script that creates a motor and that creates all the values. That's another way of doing it too, but you still need the welds. You still need the welds in there. Okay. Um, now the toe out and the toe in, we don't need welds for. We might actually, we might. So if we just say copy this, right? And uh, let's do that. And we'll change that from toe out See, now look, we're, 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 we're programming. Toe in a stop. Okay, and I think what I am gonna do in here is I am gonna weld this. It doesn't really matter where we uh, weld it to, but I do wanna weld it to there. And then we are gonna rename this also to lock, but it's in a different folder, so it doesn't matter, or a section. So then we're gonna say uh, script dot parent. Uh, what did I say? Dot uh, bed dot toe bed dot lock dot enabled equals false. Right? Really easy, easy peasy, easy peasy. And here that would be true. Okay, and then we need to make sure that we add it here as well. Otherwise, I'm going to test it and it's not going to work. 
You say, why doesn't it work? All right, just like that. False, true, false, true, false, true. Okay, we hit play. And that allows objects with mass to move. Oh, why is it? Oh, whoops. What am I doing here? Uh, till out. This should be minus one. I think I may have done that backwards. <laughs> let me see. Let me see. All right, what's this one? <laughs> toe out and toe in. All right. So then, when we do toe out, angular. Oh yeah. Yeah, the velocity should be yeah. What's going on here? Um. Oh, toe out, toe out, stop. Toe out, toe out, stop. Toe in, toe in, stop. Hmm. Maybe this needs to be reversed. That's all I can think of. Let's see. It's easier doing it there than it is uh, buggering with the constraint, especially if you have it all set up. Oh, what's going on here? Why is that? In's working. In's going out. What's going on? Uh, let's see. Oh, oh, you know why? Toe in, toe in, toe in, toe in. Ah, this should be toe out. Uh, no, this should be toe out. Ah, that makes sense, eh? It's like, hey, we're, uh, you're pressing the button. You're pressing the button, you said you are. It is actually doing what I'm telling it to do. It's just fighting itself. Now we need to see if, uh, toe out, okay. And then in, in, all right. So let's reverse the values. Out is one, in is negative one. And let's test that one more time. Hopefully it doesn't crash. When you're editing like this and you're starting and stopping and starting and stopping, Studio may crash. Okay, so we say out. Oh yeah, look at that. See, and the movement is, is, is smooth. I like that. Can we still go up? Ah, look at that, we can go up. Now we're operating a tow truck. How do you like that? That's fantastic. Now, if you don't want the truck to move, you can see it's kind of moving a little bit, and it might. Uh, we'll see. We'll have to. We'll have to test it out. Um, we can anchor a, a part on the truck, which anchors the vehicle so you can't move it while we're operating the tow bed. But we'll see. We'll see. We'll program it all, see if it works, and then troubleshoot after that. Seems to be the best way to do it. Okay. Now we're ready to. Um, now we're ready to add the tow functions uh, to the bed. So that's going to be in the next video. Thank you for watching. It was a little bit of a slow start. Um, like I say, I'm just trying to gather things together, but this is going to be a, a complete build. So I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.